I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we discover more of the Stargates mod, and we find Lantia. Hopefully you guys are ready. Ah, what a way to start today's video. So last episode, we ended up getting into Industrial 4 going there at the end, and well, I today want to go ahead and set up the laser miners, basically allowing me to mine up all of the modium in raw form. This is gonna be great to have set up, even if we can't make it top tier just yet because of power limitations, we can still get it set up and get it automated. But that's not the only thing I wanna to do today, as I wanna get back into the mod that you guys have all been waiting for, and that is the Stargate mod. There's honestly so much to do in that thing. I, and I, I don't even know where to get started. Now, before we start playing around with some Stargates, we got a little bit of work to do ahead of us. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the ore laser base, and I'm going to need four laser drills at the minimum for each one of these bases. And these will farm different ores and materials. They can even farm your uh, your ancient debris and all kinds of stuff in the nether, but it all requires a very specific biome. So for each one of the modium ores, um, we are going to need to use the, the biome that it says right here in this whitelist. So this is the deep dark biome. And the vibranium, that's gonna require a crimson forest, which is gonna be in the uh, the nether, which this will also at the same time farm some other materials, uh, but we need to use this lens to sort of better improve our odds of potentially getting this. It's almost like focusing it towards that. And then this one is end highland. So we gotta have one in three dimensions, the overworld, the end, and the nether. So that's not too difficult, right? Cause we've already been to all of those locations and we already have them set. So deep dark. Well, that's pretty straightforward. This is a deep, dark area, but notice if I'm over here, it said I was in a lush caves. Okay, so yeah, this whole area should be fine. We honestly should be able to set this up like right here. If I go ahead and clear out some of this gravel, yeah, let's just set it up right here. Why not? And we can always expand from this. Um, so I'll just place down the laser drill. And this is where it gets interesting because um, I probably want an inventory on top of this, such as like a ender chest, um, but you can either place it directly on here, but it doesn't really matter so long as this machine, as long as this box has this ore laser base within its bounds. Um, and that means you could, in theory, uh, place it like this. You could have this setting here and that would also work. So this goes to show that you can have basically three of these laser drills back behind each other and it will still work because this final one right here still means it's within range, right? And so if you really wanted to, you just need four of them for the base to work. You could set up some really obscure like contraption like this. And well, technically this, it will work so long as you power these laser drills. Notice they're all connected and you can even see the particles. So that's just kind of an interesting way of viewing this and how you can upgrade this to go incredibly fast if you surround this entire thing with these laser drills and give them all power. Now, I know that that's sort of obscure, but it's very, very important information if you wanna upscale your laser mining operation. Now, how am I gonna do it for right now? Well, I'm actually going to just place it like this, where they're all just directly connected to it like this, where you don't really see anything. It's nice and compact, and the only thing you need to do is put some gates on here, or if you're using Flux Networks, you can use Flux Networks, and this will start working, but we're also gonna need to put our laser lens in here and it can go in this slot. And then we need to also, I believe for this, we need to make sure it's within this range. So the minimum Y level is two, and then also the Y level is 20. And we're gonna to have to keep that in mind. Um, so let's go ahead and move this up. And it, it, there is no like shift or control clicking. You'd have to click one at a time to get there. So we can set it at two, we set it at five, just so long as it's in between two and that number that we've seen there. So two and 20, right? So two and 20, it's set. And we have our lens in here. It's going very slow, but if we put some upgrades in here, such as one of each of these in our machine, it's gonna to start to use a lot more power. I think by default, these use like a hundred uh, FE per tick or something like that. But as you can see, it's gonna start going a little bit faster until this process bar fills up. But you can also put some upgrades in this as well. And also another little tip is I believe you can now right click or shift right click the upgrades into the machine. That that wasn't a thing until recently. So you can now put them in there. I don't think all of these upgrades affect this in, uh, yeah, I think there's some upgrades that, that, that don't affect it 
at least this base machine, like efficiency. I don't really know if efficiency is going to change your bar because we're, we're not using any power in this particular machine. But notice, look at that. We've already gotten a raw all the Maudia more just from this alone. We're going to be generating a ton of other ore as well. Um, so we're going to have to keep that in mind. I think what I'm going to do is probably just void everything else except for the all the money more because that's really the only thing that I really want. I don't really think I'm going to want anything else that's filling up in here. Now for my ender chest colors, I'm actually going to go yellow like this for the uh, all the money and then green for the vibranium, which I think that's going to that's going to match out kind of good. And then the purple for the unobtainium. And now we have a chest line that is designed based around those colors. And now we just need to set up a trash can and a filter so that way we can filter out our stuff that comes out of this. Now for the item filtering and routing, this is where I'm going to use laser IO. I absolutely love laser IO. And so uh, to be able to set this up, we just simply need to have our ender chest placed on top. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna make the ender chest the main priority on the input. So I'll have an item card. This is gonna be the input and we'll make sure this is a higher priority setting it to one. Um, and then on the back, we're also going to have a card, uh, an item card, but this item card is going to have a, uh, a it's gonna be set to its base priority. So just like that. Um, so a lower priority than the top card, meaning that whenever we put an extract card to pull from here, it's gonna try to send to this first. And if it cannot send or what it cannot send goes in here, then the items will then redirect and go into the trash can. So, um, and this should work every time. Now we do want to set a filter on our insert card that's going to the chest. And this filter is just going to be the things that we want. In my case, I just want all the modium going in here. And so we also want to make sure this is set to allow mode because you could set this to deny, but that should be all we need to set this up. So on the bottom to this, we need to turn this into an extract card. And there we go. So you see it is now extracting the, uh, the items. And if we really want to speed it up a little bit without even putting upgrades in, we can set this to eight items at a time. And so that'll be quick enough to handle this. And as you see, we now have just all the modium in here and everything else is just simply getting voided. And I think that is fine for these setups as that's what I really just want. I just want to farm those raw ingredients. Now we did set up seeds for this, but keep in mind the seeds are kind of expensive to farm and I can only afford to get so many of them. Whereas this whole setup right here, you could farm this stuff and expand upon it indefinitely, and it doesn't cost you needing to kill the dragon over and over again. Now that I have this set up, I should be able to just simply use the copy and paste gadget to be able to copy this setup. Now, I don't think it's gonna copy the ingredients inside of the cards and their configuration, but so long as we have these blocks inside of our inventory, it should be able to place them wherever we want next. By simply pulling this menu up, I have my uh, settings for building gadget set to G, to pull up the radial menu. But now that it's set to copy, I can set to paste and you'll notice that I can just simply paste it in just like that. So pretty cool. And then you can also anchor. And uh, while you have it in paste mode, you can also go in here and change the modes. And so you can lower it and visualize everything. It's pretty cool. I really love this mod. So now I'm in a crimson forest. So just to show the paste in action, we can just simply paste this all in. And like I said, everything except for the configuration cards, which are really easy to set up is ready to go. And uh, oh, I also need to apply my power. I'm just gonna place that over here. And there we go. So just about everything goes in place and works as it should. Now, some interesting interaction with that is uh, it took the ender chest out of my inventory, but removed the color code that was associated to it and set it to the base code, which I think is very interesting to say the least. Um, so I will have to recode this just like that. And I think I'm going to recopy this and avoid copying that. But once I reset the code, you can see now we already have seven raw all the Mahdi more. And literally just right after ending that section, bam, I now have a vibranium more in here. So like I said, this is going to be great once we hook this up to some drawers. So just like that, it's all ready to go. So take a look. This is the one that goes in the in Highlands. Now this one gives you obsidian, but there wasn't really much else that I seen that this gives that I'm super, that's going to be super useful. Maybe later on, we might want to, to add some other things from this, but the main goal is getting unobtainium and we already have unobtainium from this. We just need to make sure these areas are loaded 
And if we want to speed this up later, like I said, all we have to do is just add more laser drills and we're good to go. Just making sure you're in the appropriate biomes. This is probably one of the fastest ways to harvest this material because it gives it to us in the raw form, which then allows us to process it. Oh, by the way, one thing I wanted to mention, you guys let me know down in the comments and I do appreciate you guys commenting, by the way, that is how I learn. But you guys told me that I can actually increase the innate cap on this sword. Well, not this sword specifically, but if I was to make a new sword, I could actually get my innate cap to be exponentially higher. We could have it really, really high, even though right now this sword is just really powerful. I don't really know what I would need an even higher sword for, but you can do it. And I believe that the item that you use is the fire upgrade. So you would just toss those into the pool while you're making your Caliburn sword. So into that foggy pool, you toss that in and then you toss your sword in. And apparently that will make the innate cap higher. Also having enchantments and stuff on it as well should help. And then you convert your sword to the Morgan. Um, it's really hard for me to know that. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's any quests or anything in here that specifically leads you in that direction um, or even explain that in any way. I, there's no way to search quests, so um, that makes that nearly impossible. But still, I thank you guys for letting me know in the comments. Might be something we test out later on. So now it's time for the fun part. That's right, we are going to dive further into the Stargates mod. And I have a feeling that we're going to be able to travel to new dimensions, because really we've only been able to go to one thus far, and that was Abydos, which was the planet that was just simply covered in sand. Now that was an awesome thing to do early on, as it did get, grant us some Jaffa gear that was just insanely powerful, and I, I pretty much went through the entire set of gear uh, early game until we got into the gear that we're currently in. But there was one thing that we gathered from that trip, and that was this golden idol. And apparently we need to combine that into an archaeology table. This archaeology table is what we're going to use to hopefully discover another address. And so I need to put this into a table and we are going to have to run through some villagers, hopefully. And this is going to be a very special villager, <laughs> AKA the archaeologist villager. And so the archaeologist map, I think, is what we actually need. So emerald and a compass. So I think we have almost everything we're going to need. Uh, now, following maps is incredibly painful sometimes. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it's not too far out. Um, and I wonder if this actually upgrades. Oh, it does. We'll get given a compass. But this right here is supposedly going to mark the spot to a location that might contain a new address. This is going to be a fun journey. Now, when we look at these maps, the best way to navigate these maps, which it may seem kind of straightforward at first, is the top of the map. This area up here is north. This area is your south, and then your east and your west. And so, if you follow along with your map, we will see that we are in the top left-hand corner with a little white dot, and so we're gonna have to travel south and a little bit east. So if we were to travel this way and a little bit east, going in this direction, we should find this after a given period of time. Now, this is going to be one heck of a journey. Uh, I mean, our dot isn't too small, so maybe we're within 500 blocks or so of this location. I'm kind of interested, and I don't know if this map is going to lead me to a new one or if this map is just simply leading me to another Stargate portal. I really don't know. Now, you know what? The wiki for this mod actually says that I probably should trade up that villager until it hits its master final level trade in which it should give me a map, a map to the ring of gods. So this map probably isn't going to take me where I want to go. I'm probably better off if I go ahead and level it up. Now there's actually an easy way to level up villagers. All we have to do is stone cut some emeralds and we'll end up getting a bunch of these emerald shards. And this mod, if we look up villager, we can find these grimoire books of the Lost Merchant's Guide. And this right here should be able to level up our villager, level up its trades, but it does need to be in world for that to happen. So let's go ahead and do that. I just right clicked it and it is now under the journeyman. I don't think that unlocks it entirely. No, that just unlocks this next tier until we hit the max, which it's now at master. And there is the map that we need. 
So I can put this guy back in here, but I want to keep it in mind. This is a really powerful yeah. mod, allowing you to skip all of the, like, grindy part of villagers immediately, yeah. as if easy villagers yeah. wasn't enough. So what do we need for here? So this, I think, is the map that we need. And so we are going to probably put this map away for now. I, I still don't want I still want to figure out what that map leads to, but emeralds and another compass. And we should be ready to rock and roll. Let's grab that. The map of the ring of gods. Ooh, that looks like a Java cup right there. Sandstone symbol. Interesting. So now we have the map. Okay, and this one's a little bit different. This one we need to actually travel a little bit north and to the west. It looks like maybe quite a bit to the west. So now we can actually get started on our journey. The more I learn, I'm learning so much with very little th information to go off of in game. Thankfully, there is a little bit of a wiki for this mod, as I mentioned, that has a getting started guide on it, which is really, really nice. And I'm learning as I go. Oh, wow, this isn't very far away from us at all because the dot is getting quite large. So that means that we're very close. So already we are just traveling west. We're already moving on the map. So once I get this in the right direction, then we can start heading a little bit north. And that should take us right to that X that marks the spot. Oh boy, I'm very, very interested to see what this is. Apparently there's going to be another Stargate, hopefully buried underground. Oh, it should be just over this ridge. I think we're, yes, we're almost there. The map is now loading. And it should be right up here. Now, with it being an X, it's pretty vague. I don't think it's going to be based off the same way that the uh, the shipwrecks and the buried treasure are. But right in this general area is where it should be, directly below here. So, yes, there is a lot of water. And, of course, it's encapsulated by water. Oh, how are we supposed to manage this? This right here says the Milky Way. This is the portal, though. Does it work underwater, or am I going to have to clear the water around this? Now, apparently, we're supposed to be able to find a cartouche that's supposed to be above this, which is the structure that has the address on it. But I don't see an address. So what I'm wondering is if I could just use the other code to dial this. I, I don't know. Apparently, I can also just pick this up. So I just decided to, to move this. Um, I'm kind of worried, though. I place it down and then I place this. How do I link this, though, to it? Does it matter where it's at or is it just going to look for the closest location? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, this looks like the same Milky Way. This is a Milky Way Stargate. Let's try our numbers. So... It needs 26, 6, 14, 31, 11, 29, and that's it. It's orange. There it goes. Oh, that's so cool. But is this just going to take me back to Abydos? That's what I don't know. So I guess we'll find out. Oh, okay, it does. It takes me right back to the same location. So are there more dimensions in this mod? And if so, how do we find them? Okay, so from the looks of it, there are multiple dimensions, but you are going to have to figure out and find what looks like those destination markers in the world somehow. But thankfully on the wiki, they do have a list of some intergalactic codes and apparently this dimension, the Abydos dimension, it has different biomes supposedly in here. Apparently a spire biome as well. Um, and also the material that we find in this dimension allows us to make our own portals like that. So looking on the compass, yes, it does look like there is an Abydos spires. It's 2000 blocks out though. So if you've only seen desert, well, it's probably why it's several thousand blocks out ah and it turns out that apparently all the mods is using an interesting version of the data pack that the altars that spawn around the cartouches that you would find that have the addresses on them they're apparently random and you'll find them strikes just completely random throughout the world uh, and they'll have different addresses on them but you don't know what the addresses are for so that's why i didn't find one that was near that portal unfortunately 
interesting. And I guess you just don't know where something's going to take you in that case. It is funny that the wiki on the FAQ even mentions it. So I bet we didn't even need to hunt for this map. I, I bet we didn't even need to do that. Oh my. Is this the spires? These are insane looking. This has to be us getting close, at least. This is where I want to be because this is the ore that we need. So this is going to be fantastic. Yes, this stuff right here. This is apparently what you use to make all of the components from this mod. And apparently this stuff is called Naquita. So yes, Naquita ore. Here we go. And unfortunately, I never really watched this show when I was younger, but I do remember my dad watching it. And I remember seeing bits and pieces. I was definitely reminiscent when I seen that portal come out because I remember seeing that. I think it was like on the sci-fi channel or something like that. But these spires, these also remind me of something else. It reminds me of how the buildings were stacked in Ready Player One. Like, does it not? This is how their buildings, all of their buildings were stacked. Also, apparently when mining for this stuff, sometimes you'll get pure Naquita. And so, interesting. And this is used to make like weapons grade versions of this stuff, which I think is used to make the gauntlet. So now that I know this information, let's try out some codes that they have available for us on the wiki. So we should be able to dial, for example, it says the end, which I'm assuming just takes us to the end. Um, and so this should work for everyone so long as you have a Milky Way portal, such as this one. So it says 18, 24, 8, 16, 7, 35, and then 30. And when we dial, that should activate. That is so crazy. And that apparently is going to take us to the end. Oh my gosh, it did take us to the end. So that took us directly to the end. You could just skip straight to the end islands with that code. Okay. So is there any more codes? It looks like there's a code also for the nether. That one is going to be 135, 6, 31, 15, 28, and 32. And this should take us to the nether, but there's also other areas we can go to. This is just kind of awesome that we're able to travel back and forth like that. It took us to the roof of the nether. That's amazing. I am saving this location for sure. I mean, not that it's hard to get onto the nether roof, but the fact that this took us here is kind of hilarious. So now apparently there's two more locations we can go to, and these are different. These are going to be very different dimensions, I think, because these are, I think, associated with the mod itself. Now this code should take us to the Chulik dimension. So this is going to be one, eight, two, 22, 14, 36, and 19. That should take us there, I think. Oh my God. It's so satisfying seeing that every time. What is this dimension going to be about though? This looks like the overworld, but it's, it's definitely not. It's the Ch Chulik forest. This is 100%. There's a structure here. This is 100% not earth. What is this? Is this from the mod? What have we done? Have we discovered, we've discovered a new planet entirely. This looks just like the overworld though. This is salt, okay. I don't wanna lose where our portal's at, but is there anything else in this dimension other than just trees? Apparently there is a forest and there's a plains biome. 
The plains biome seems to be just like the other dimension, like 2000 blocks out. This has got to be in reference to stuff from the show and I just don't know it, but I'm sure you guys are geeking out in the comments. 100% no, you got to let me know what some of this lore is behind this stuff because I'd really be interested to know. Like this hut keeps showing up here in this forest and I wonder if there's another structure potentially in the plains. We're getting pretty close. I mean, Google's given me a little bit of information saying that this was apparently 2,000 light years away from Earth. Uh, interesting. And a part is a part of the Cronus Empire. Like, this is a whole other structure here. Like, yeah, this definitely has some importance. There's just this simple houses. Just very simple houses. Like this, like, this is just a place that you could just move right into. But there's no loot in any of these. This is a full-fledged kitchen. Oh, there is meat and also a little enchanting room or a, a library. And yeah, here it is. Just a massive plains biome. But I mean, it's just like a clone of the overworld. It's fantastic. Now, just if you're concerned about me using these codes, apparently you can locate pretty much all of them by just using the structure compass and you can locate your Stargate's journey um, or SG journey just from here, you can locate all of these pedestals potentially. Um, you just have to get lucky to find these codes apparently. Now this name, I kind of remember. I, I feel like I remember this name, Lantia. And this, however, is a different galaxy and I think requires a different portal in order to get to it. Now, just for the sake of trying it, I am going to try it with this portal. However, I don't think it'll work, but we'll give it a shot. So this will take us to Lantia if it does work. So 18, 20, 1, 15, 14, 7, and 19. It sounds like it's going to work. I think it's going to work. I don't think the portals have like very specific characteristics. It just works. And this is Lantia. This is so cool. I, okay. I was not expecting this. It's straight up a, an ocean base. Like you could start here. It's a sky block. <laughs> There's just nothing under here. D like we are basically at sky limit. So by the time we got low enough, we would have drowned. And I'm sure there's a layer of bedrock at the bottom. But it's just a sky base. That's honestly kind of cool. This is basically an ocean void world that you could tap into right from the start if you wanted to play here. Oh, why is this hidden from us? I could have started my base in this location. I still might use this place, honestly. This is still really cool. Now I did check the biomes out and it does appear like this is just it. It is all a deep ocean biome. Just all of this. Oh, this is so cool. And these are just blocks of the material that we went hunting for at the start. And I believe this is the last dimension. I, I may be wrong though. Man, I mean, what a way to end today's episode. This is absolutely epic. And I think that is the best looking Stargate portal I've seen thus far. Oh, this is so, this is so cool. Now we are at like build height. We're very close to it, I know. So I wonder how like, I think we can go up to like 300 some odd blocks. So we're, we still have, there's a ton of space that you can still build even with this. Oh my goodness. Yes, this is 100% going to be used for something. I mean, honestly, this would be a great place to have housed my crop farms just to sort of keep the FPS lag to this area and not at my base. But with that, guys, I am going to have to call it here. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you learned something new and hopefully you take advantage of this place because it is 100% worth it. All of those codes should work in your world as they're the ones that are listed over on the wiki for this mod. So definitely be sure to check that out. And uh, well, guys, 
thank you so much for watching. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to a trinket over on the Discord. Thank you so much, by the way, for becoming a Discord premium member and supporting my content in one of the best ways possible. Also, you guys do get access to supporter servers and all kinds of stuff like world downloads. So be sure to check it out. Discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. You can join the amazing crew today. And if uh, you just don't want to support in that way, you can just join the Discord. We have a ton of tons of things for you to do over there, uh, whether that's get support for help for things in modded Minecraft or what, what have it, you know, uh, it's just a great community and I recommend checking it out. And guys, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.